the Pompeian styles are four periods which are distinguished in ancient Roman mural painting. They were originally delineated and described by the German archaeologist August Mao, 1840 Euro 1909, from the excavation of wall paintings at Pompeii, which is one of the largest group of surviving examples of Roman frescoes. The wall painting styles have allowed art historians to delineate the various phases of interior decoration in the centuries leading up to the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD, which both destroyed the city and preserved the paintings, and between stylistic shifts in Roman art. In the succession of styles, there is a reiteration of stylistic themes. The paintings also tell a great deal about the prosperity of the area and specific tastes during the times. The main purpose of these frescoes was to reduce the claustrophobic interiors of Roman rooms, which were windowless and dark. The paintings, full of color and life, brightened up the interior and made the room feel more spacious. First Style The first style, also referred to as structural, incrustation or masonry style, was most popular from 200 BC until 80 BC. It is characterized by the simulation of marble with other simulated elements, and the use of vivid color, both being a sign of wealth. This style was a replica of that found in the Ptolemaic palaces of the Near East, where the walls were inset with real stones and marbles, and also reflects the spread of Hellenistic culture as Rome interacted and conquered other Greek and Hellenistic states in this period. Mural reproductions of Greek paintings are also found. This style divided the wall into various, multi-colored patterns that took the place of extremely expensive cut stone. The first style was also used with other styles for decorating the lower sections of walls that were not seen as much as the higher levels. An example would be the wall painting in the Sam Knight House in Herculaneum. Second style The second style, architectural style, or illusionism dominated the first century BC, where walls were decorated with architectural features and trompe compositions. Early on, elements of this style are reminiscent of the first style, but this slowly starts to be substituted element by element. This technique consists of highlighting elements to pass them off as three-dimensional realities, columns for example, dividing the wall space into zones, and was a method widely used by the Romans. It is characterized by use of relative perspective to create trompe l'oeil in wall paintings. The picture plane was pushed farther back into the wall by painted architectonic features such as ionic columns or stage platforms. These wall paintings counteracted the claustrophobic nature of the small, windowless rooms of Roman houses. Images and landscapes began to be introduced to the first style around 90 BC, and gained ground from 70 BC onwards along with illusionistic and architectonic motives. Decoration had to give the greatest possible impression of depth. Imitations of images appeared, at first in the higher section, then in the background of landscapes which provided a stage for mythological stories, theatrical masks, or decorations. During the reign of Augustus, the style evolved. False architectural elements opened up wide expanses with which to paint artistic compositions. A structure inspired by stage sets developed, whereby one large central tableau is flanked by two smaller ones. In this style, the illusionistic tendency continued, with a breaking up of walls with painted architectural elements or scenes. The landscape elements eventually took over to cover the entire wall, with no framing device, so it looked to the viewer as if he or she was merely looking out of a room onto a real scene. Basically, the more developed second style was the antithesis of the first style. Instead on confining and strengthening the walls, the goal was to break down the wall to show scenes of nature and the outside world. Much of the depth of the mature second style comes from the use of aerial perspective that blur the appearance of objects further away. Thus, the foreground is rather precise while the background is somewhat indistinctly purple, blue, and grey. One of the most recognized and unique pieces representing the second style is the Dionysiac mystery frieze in the Villa of the Mysteries. This work depicts the Dionysian cult that was made mostly women. In the scene, however, one boy is depicted. Fashionable particularly from the 40s BC onwards, it began to wane in the final decades BC. An example is the architectural painting at the Villa Boscreal at Boscreal. 
Third style. The third style, or ornate style, was popular around 20 Euro 10 BC as a reaction to the austerity of the previous period. It leaves room for more figurative and colorful decoration, with an overall more ornamental feeling, and often presents great finesse in execution. This style is typically noted as simplistically elegant. Its main characteristic was departure from illusionistic devices, although these later crept back into this style. It obeyed strict rules of symmetry dictated by the central element, dividing the wall into three horizontal and three to five vertical zones. The vertical zones would be divided up by geometric motifs or bases, or slender columns of foliage hung around candelabra. Delicate motifs of birds or semi-fantastical animals appeared in the background. Plants and characteristically Egyptian animals were often introduced, part of the Egyptomania in Roman art after Augustus' defeat of Cleopatra and annexation of Egypt in 30 BC. These paintings were decorated with delicate linear fantasies, predominantly monochromatic, that replaced the three-dimensional worlds of the second style. An example is the Villa of Livia in Prima Porta outside of Rome. Also included in this style are paintings similar to the one found in Cubiculum 15 of the Villa of Agrippa Posthumus and Bosca Trecis. These involve a delicate architectural frame over a blank, monochromatic background with only a small scene located in the middle, like a tiny floating landscape. It was found in Rome until 40 AD and in the Pompeii area until 60 AD. Fourth style. Characterized as a Baroque reaction to the third style's mannerism, the fourth style in Roman wall painting is generally less ornamented than its predecessor. The style was, however, much more complex. It revives large-scale narrative painting and panoramic vistas while retaining the architectural details of the second and first styles. In the Julio-Claudian phase, a textile-like quality dominates and tendrils seem to connect all the elements on the wall. The colors warm up once again, and they are used to advantage in the depiction of scenes drawn from mythology. The overall feeling of the walls typically formed a mosaic of frame pictures that took up entire walls. The lower zones of these walls tended to be composed of the first style. Panels were also used with floral designs on the walls. A prime example of the fourth style is the Ixion Room in the House of the Viterra in Pompeii. One of the largest contributions seen in the fourth style is the advancement of still life with intense space and light. Shading was very important in the Roman still life. This style was never truly seen again until 17th and 18th centuries with the Dutch. It was also used in the 17th and 18th centuries with the English. Sources, Metropolitan Museum site on the styles. Pompeian style a re-examination, Gardner's art through the ages.